Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. Today, we've got a video for you that you've been asking. How the heck do you load a 2,700-pound projectile into the ship's magazines? Before we get to that, here's a word from the museum. Hello, I'm Perry Levine, a trustee on the Battleship New Jersey. Originally, I was appointed as a trustee by the Camden County Commissioners as their representative. After serving that term, the battleship retained my services, which I'm very proud of. I'm a former U.S. Navy Lieutenant serving for four years in the submarine fleet. I'm enjoying my experiences on the battleship very much, and our Jewish War Veteran Organization has proudly held several events on the battleship. I encourage each of you to support the battleship, its museum, and its educational benefits to our community. Thank you. The turrets themselves were used as cranes to lower ammunition into the ship. I'm going to show you some of the uh, ammunition loading points, but they are located around the outside of the armored barbettes. When we were loading shells, the turret would have to rotate so that crane uh, appendages like this one, or you see a different model down there on turret number one, uh, so that those can line up over the holes. Inside the holes are cranes, winches that send cables up through this and then back down again. These are the pieces of equipment that are used to lower the shells down into the ship. Because of the nature of an armored barbette, they didn't want to put any sort of hole in the roof of the turret or the side of the barbette. So projectiles have to be loaded into the ship outside of the barbette, go all the way down into the barbette from the underside and then up to the various shell decks. So we're gonna follow that uh, process through the inside of the ship. The shells come aboard either individually or in pairs uh, on wooden pallets. Typically, this would be done during underwear replenishment, although it could be done pier side, and it could also be done by uh, vertical replenishment, which would be a helicopter carrying them over. That, of course, only started during the Vietnam War. Once on deck, the ship has a number of carts like this for moving the projectiles around, and a number of carts like that one for moving the powder around. The powder comes aboard in aluminum canisters. The canister is about 20 pounds on its own, and it'll hold three 110 pound powder bags. The shells would typically have a cap over the nose and a leather band wrapped around the uh, brass rotating ring to keep that from getting damaged. Brass is pretty soft, and if that gets damaged in the transit, then that might prevent it from uh, gripping the right foot of the barrel. So once the uh, projectiles come on deck, and if we're doing an underway replenishment or a vert rep, they're probably coming aboard either all here at the bow or all back on the fantail, well, then you gotta get them to their actual gun turret. So these carts have wheels and you can roll them wherever they need to go. Underneath of each of the turrets are a couple of hatches like this one here. These hatches have a sheet metal cover on them to make them flush with the wooden deck. And then they've got an, an armored hatch underneath of that uh, that's normally bolted in place but can be open. And then the turret would rotate around and using that crane we just saw, they would lower the projectile straight down there. Uh, and it is one of the few places on the ship where it forms a pretty continuous trunk all the way down. Hence the heavy bolted hatch so that we don't get any sort of explosions going through, and hence it being outside of the armored barbat. So if something manages to punch through that uh, trunk, it's not actually where the ammunition is in combat. 
So here we are at one of the hatches inside the ship. Again, you can see it's bolted down pretty heavily. So it would take a small wrench to open all this. These bolts are attached to dogs, like this one in the hatch in the overhead. And you can see all this cabling that is fouling the hatch. Well, obviously that's museum era because when the ship was in service, you would never have that cabling here where the uh, ammunition is being loaded. The powder or the shells are coming down through round hoists like this one. The powder can come through a regular square armored hatch like this. There's a ladder in this hatchway, uh, but all the ladders on the ship are just pinned in place. You can remove those pins and pull the ladders out, which is why there's a diagonal ladder and a uh, vertical ladder. This railing was added by the museum so people don't fall in the hatch. Here, you can see one of the hoists in the overhead uh, that would be used, run the cable up through your crane and then back down. Uh, these come in two different sizes. There's one for the projectiles, which can lift over a ton, and one for the powder, which is less than that. And here's where the controller mounts. It's got a long length of cable attached so that you can uh, watch what you're doing with it, pick it up off the rack and carry it to look. And I imagine it's long enough that you can even go up on deck to see what's happening up there. Uh, these run off of 440 power, and this is probably an original. The, the casing is made out of Bakelite. Looks like we've got a two position switch. It is hoist and lower. So let's give it a shot. I guess that still works. So on board the ship, uh, a lot of things have had the fuses pulled for them, but a lot of other things still work. We use a lot of the ship's original systems for climate control on board, and uh, clearly this one still works, although I couldn't say that all of them for all the gun turrets do. Uh, as you go through the ship as a visitor, please don't push any of the buttons. Shell hoists like this one are not enclosed trunks. They are straight up and down on the outside of the turret tube barbette, but they're not enclosed in any way. For the powder magazines, it's a little different. So now we have a tail of two hoists. The shell hoist up there at the forward end of the turret, not in the trunk. This is one of the trunks for turret two's powder at the aft end of the turret. This one, uh, as you can see, vertical ladder, so you've got a full trunk leading down, uh, goes straight down to a magazine, and also has access to forward plot. Above us, we've got a hatch in the overhead that leads all the way up to the main deck, and the hoist that's up there to lower everything down. Now, if you turn around, We end up at this other trunk, which again has hatches that lead down to a magazine, but no hatch in the overhead. Instead, there's a 500 pound powder hoist up there. So somehow the powder comes down here. And then without a rail system, which you'll see later on that seems to connect all of our magazine systems, except this one, uh, but without that rail system, they're supposed to get the 350 pound powder canister over here to this hoist to lower it into its magazine. This trunk is only accessed via the vertical ladder in the trunk from here on third deck or down uh, on fourth deck, there is a door in the combat information center. I believe IO class battleships were not originally designed with the Combat Information Center. That was the second story of the 16-inch powder magazine, and it was converted to CIC so that uh, they had that sort of space. It limits the powder capacity and uh, seems to have completely messed up all the ammunition handling arrangements for this truck. 
With the exception of that one magazine, most of them are two-story. So, powder comes down a trunk like this one, and then down here on this level, we've got a rail in the overhead that we can sling that powder up one tube to move it to one magazine or the other. So we've got magazines on each side which feed through two, and then we've got the centerline magazines here like this one that feeds through one forward of me. They're all connected by these I-beams, with the exception of that one trunk. Um, and they're all two stories tall. So there's ammunition above and below in this space where we are, connected by a gravity hoist. Check out the video in the description below that shows how the gravity hoist works and the uh, two-story magazine system, if you'd like more information on that. Anyway, from here, the powder is safely stored and it can be taken from its canisters to the rail and then pass through the annular space into the turret where the hoist is. And we cover that in a, uh, I believe in the same video on ammunition handling. So check that link in the description if you're interested. IO class battleships carry more ammunition for their main guns than any other battleship. They could carry 130 rounds per barrel. Uh, and so an IO class battleship carries approximately 400 tons of ammunition just for the 16-inch guns. We've got more for the 5-inch guns and for other weapon systems. Uh, and that is why every time we go into or out of a civilian port, uh, we've got to offload all this ammunition and then reload it again. So for example, if we were going into New York, we would have to stop at Bayonne, New Jersey. Uh, they've got a two mile long pier there. We can offload all the ammunition onto trains uh, before you proceed up into New York. We do this because during World War I, an ammunition ship blew up in Halifax Harbor and destroyed part of Halifax. Uh, so from then on, U.S. Navy ships offload their ammunition when they're going into a port at designated areas, and then they've got to reload every time they go back out to sea. Uh, and then we can also do underway replenishment if we're underway. So that's 400 tons of powder leaving the ship. And um, roughly 1,200 shells at a ton apiece, 1,200 tons of projectiles that have to be offloaded from the ship every time we go into or out of a port. Uh, and so you can see that this system is pretty complex considering it's something that was intended to be done frequently. Uh, and the solution to that is you just throw more men at it. The, the government departments have a lot of uh, low-ranking, non-rated enlisted sailors who are smart like tractors and strong like oxes. So they are able to manually load and offload a lot of this stuff quickly. So here is our shell loading hatch, a round hatch in the overhead. So the projectile comes down to here. And then we've got a place to mount a rail. Come on into the annular space. Here you can see pieces of rail that should be there, and they attach right here. So you bring this shell down, you sling it up on the rail, and you slide it all the way around the annular space to this hoist above me. So now we have brought the shell down on the outside of the armored barbette, and it is now inside the armored part of the turret. Let's see how it goes up. So here's that hatch from the top side. We're on the mezzanine level, which only turret two has because it's superimposed over turret one. Um, the other turrets would just rise right up to the shell deck, which is where we'll go next. The mezzanine is just spare stowage for extra projectiles. There isn't any hoist here to get it up to the guns. So we would have to send it from here, get it back over above this hatch, and send it up to the shell deck. So here's where one of our hatches from the mezzanine comes up to the shell deck, where these are stored and where they can actually be moved to the hoists. On the aft end of the turret are the gray columns, which are the shell hoists, which would take these up to the gun pits, where they're loaded into the breech of the gun. So 
That's a subject for another video. You can also see here the chain hoist that would be lifting them from up above, or below, excuse me, and the hoist itself. Uh, and once upon a time, that bag contained all that chain. Just like the magazines are two stories tall, so too are the shell decks. Above us is a second shell deck, which also has hoists. And we can get shells from here to up there, and vice versa if needed. Uh, both of these shells can alternate, or both of these decks can alternate loading shells into the hoists. Each barrel only has the one hoist. So uh, here is one of the shell hoists from the lower shell deck. And that's how we raise a shell. There's also ways to move the shells around this deck using gypsy head captions like this one and rope. Uh, and while we're here, let me point out that our deck is unpainted. Uh, it should be covered with a thin film of grease, which allows you to more easily move the shells over it. Um, we cleaned all the grease off of this deck when we opened it for tours. Some um, museum battleships have this deck painted, and um, maybe that's accurate for them, but for us it makes no sense to be sliding 2,700 pound projectiles across a painted deck because it's just going to tear up your deck, uh, and the oil preserves the steel just as well as paint does. Um, I've never seen any picture of our deck where it's painted, and here you can even see the imprints from shells in the steel deck, which indicates to me that there wouldn't have been a coat of paint over this, because when you chip that off, you would lose a feature like that. Anyway, thanks for watching. This has been a fan requested video. If there's a question you have about moving shells or uh, suggestions for other videos, let us know in the comment section down below. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State, but also from a number of uh, individual and institutional uh, donors, like viewers like yourselves. Donations you've made allowed us to go from making one video a week to making five videos a week. And if you would like to support the channel so we can keep doing that, there's a link in the description for ways you can donate. Also remember to like, share, and subscribe so that you're notified whenever those new videos come out. Thanks for watching.